Hi everyone, how you doing? It's a bit mad being a Swindon Town fan, isn't it, sometimes? It is pretty crazy. At the time of recording, which is something I'm going to have to say a lot in this video, Scott Lindsay is still the Swindon Town manager. Except he's not. The rumour mill has been turning on Twitter, and it sounds as though, through many journalist sources, Scott Lindsay has been sacked by or simply left Swindon Town supposedly to take the managerial role at fellow League Two club Crawley Town. So the question then, when any manager leaves their post, who will replace them? I'm going to run down the top five picks for the next Swindon Town manager, which will almost certainly not contain the guy we end up appointing. But let's go anyway. At five, we have Ben Garner, a manager that all Swindon Town fans will know because, well, he managed us last year. In the time between then and now, he has had a very brief stint, but not surprisingly brief stint, at Charlton Athletic. He left Swindon Town in the summer as Charlton paid us a compensation package to take him to the Valley. However, as many Swindon Town fans, including myself, predicted, it didn't last very long, and he has been sacked after a not very impressive six months at the League One outfit. The reason why he's in the frame is because he did do a pretty good job at Swindon last year. He guided us to the playoffs and into a position that ultimately it wasn't his fault that we weren't promoted because, let's face it, McCurdy and Davison should have scored those damn penalties. He inherited a position at the start of last season that looked impossible that Swindon Town be promoted from and yet he delivered attacking possession-based football where Swindon Town were the most creative and attacking team in the entire league, scoring more goals than anyone else. I'm not sure many Swindon Town fans, again, including myself, would want to see him return, given the manner of his exit, where he didn't even really say goodbye to the Swindon Town fans until a belated interview after leaving Charlton six months later, saying that he maybe wouldn't mind coming back. Um, thank you, next. Number four, Luke Gallard. A name that has emerged in my opinion, purely because he used to play for Swindon Town. And that is the only type of person that any Swindon Town fan seems to consider when we're buying a player or appointing a manager, they have to have played for Swindon Town before. Luke Goward is currently the manager of Wood in the National League. They sit 13th after 23 games, which isn't very impressive. He is an OK win percentage. He's been there since 2015, including two good cut runs in that time. Once last season, when he got to the fifth round of the FA Cup, losing to Everton. But he ultimately hasn't really achieved anything with Wood. He got them to the playoff final a few seasons ago, but apart from that, it's fairly unspectacular. I've never seen him coach a game, so I don't know what style of football he really plays. I'm pretty certain the people who've been pushing his name haven't seen him coach a game either. I think we'll more likely look for a coach with a bigger background in youth football and possession-based style of play. Number three, David Artell. Former Gibraltar international David Artell has only managed Crew Alexandra, but he did a decent job there, saving them from relegation and then eventually getting them promoted in the Covid knocked out season. Crew under David Artell were actually top of the league at the time, but points were game champions, take that L. At Crew, he has a great history of working with young players, something that the ownership structure will value very highly. And with his experience at the level, I think that he could be a good option. And I actually wouldn't mind if we did a point. At number two at the list, it's not just one manager, but two. It is the Cowley brothers, recently sacked by Portsmouth. And obviously they made their name at Lincoln, taking them from the National League all the way into League One. After that successful spell at Lincoln, they then had an ill-fated season at Huddersfield, where it didn't really work out in the championship but they managed to get another big job at Portsmouth in League One. Um, it didn't work out for them at Portsmouth either. However, it's surprising for a managerial team that has been sacked to get so much positive comments and goodwill from fans under the statement. So it shows that they are true football men who really engage with the fan base, which is something Swindon Town fans really need at this point in time, as a lot of us are feeling a fair bit of disillusionment with the style of play and lack of attacking football and results that we've been seeing under Scott Lindsay. However, the reason that I think this is very unlikely, apart from the fact that I think the Cowleys could be fairly expensive and not want to drop straight back down into League 2 after managing in the Championship and League 1, 
The other factor is that it's a break from the style of play that we know that the ownership structure wants to play. We were told in the summer when we were looking for a replacement for Ben Garner that it's important for the manager to bring youth players through, it's important for the manager to play possession-based, attractive, attacking style of football. Um, so it doesn't fit this brief because the Cowboys are very direct, they like playing a big target man up front and getting the balls into the box. I don't think a lot of the fans would mind this play, but I think it doesn't really fit with what the club's trying to do. And if we did appoint them, you'd have to be really worried for the long-term vision of the club because you'd be completely scrapping that with the signings of Charlie Austin and then the Cowleys. It might work for the season, but long-term, it really leaves a lot of question marks where we're headed as a football club. So my number one and the choice that, based on the names that I've seen go around Twitter at the moment, the one that I'd really want to appoint is Liam Manning. Liam Manning was recently sacked by Milton Keynes Dons after a very poor start to this season in League One. However, the season before, in his first season of management in English football, he almost got them promoted to the championship with 89 points, finishing just outside the automatic promotion spaces and losing in the playoffs. Manning is known for working with youth players and a history of being a youth team coach at Ipswich and West Ham and even the City Group, which shows that there's a lot of faith in him as a youth coach and as a coach in general with the ability to play attacking successful football but also bring young players through. I really like to see him in the dugout because I think it really fits what we're trying to do. We'd like to see a more attacking, more progressive but still possession-based style of football at the club and I think it could be a perfect appointment given that he is a still really young coach, could have a big future with Swindon and could be with us for several years. So those are my picks for the top five contenders for the Swindon Town managerial job, replacing Scott Lindsay, who again, as I record this, has not left Swindon Town. It's a very strange situation to be in. Who knows what's going to happen? Probably by the time I've posted this video, it will immediately go out of date as we'll appoint someone completely different like Paul Caddis because he used to play for Swindon Town for some reason. Or maybe someone even stronger like Grant McCann or Jonathan Woodgate. And those could be strong choices as well. Not choices that I think would choose to come to Swindon, but you never know. Swindon's a crazy, crazy club to be a fan of. Wouldn't change it for the world. Um, if you feel the same way and like Swindon Town content, please like, subscribe and share the video and I'll see you next time, probably for a reaction to our real managerial appointment. Alright, thanks a lot. See you next time.